Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep Podcast Network post game to Bucks Celtics podcast. What felt like a 145 to 50 loss was actually a 109 to 86 loss for the Bucks. The Celtics tie up the series 1 1. We're going to try and focus on positive vibes sometimes because, brother, that game stunk. Brother and sister, everyone listening, that game stunk. Uh, I'm Ty Winnish of the Eurostep, joined as always by my per- resilient co host, Rohan Kadi, and our perseverant, I don't think that's a word, friend. Persevering. Persevering. There we go. Thank you, Rohan. Adam McGee of the Winning Six podcast. I'm starting out nearly as bad as the Bucks. Adam, Rohan, how's it going? I'm doing great. Yeah, just just to get an adjective. I don't know. usually get adjectives. I know. Like it, last yeah. time out, Rohan got cleanly, and then for me not to get an adjective didn't feel great. I was like, "That's that's a shot across the bows there." So I'm glad to have got an adjective this time. I'm gonna have to start doing all adjectives now, I guess, or none. Yeah. Oh, come well, on. That Ty. might be the better option, but it's yeah, your at thing. Least give at me mine. Um, well, I'll do all. I'll do all. How's it going, Rohan? You know, could be could be better. Uh, <laughs> It was a, it's a tough watch. We're coming right, like literally like just a few minutes after the game ended. That was tough. That was real tough. That was a tough scene all around. Uh, yeah. Boom. My mood is lifted for no longer having to watch it. I will yeah. say that. Yeah, it does I was, help. I was dreading the podcast a lot more while watching the game than I am now. I'm on the podcast to finish watching the game. It was truly a game of two halves. Believe it or not, despite a pretty bad fourth quarter, the Bucks won the second half of this game thanks to a strong just, third just quarter. Just about. Yeah, by two, but still. The fact that they, they win the second half after pretty much everything goes wrong in the first half for Milwaukee and right for Boston. Jalen Brown, who we knew was going to be important, was a freaking flamethrower. The Celtics' ball movement was good. The defense on Giannis was good. Giannis was very, very bad in the first half, but bounced back to have a Giannis-like stat line. But Milwaukee loses the first quarter by 11 points, the second quarter by 14 points. That lead was never trimmed down enough. Although, you know, we only had two minutes of garbage time. I mean, Milwaukee, I think, was down as much by the 25. I don't know if it ever got to 30 they kept it around 14, 15, 16, what felt like the whole second half, but not enough went right even then. Milwaukee, what's the three-point stat? This is one of you have. I know three makes. It was three of 18, which is the fewest makes in the Bud era, and the differential between the teams is the largest in East playoff history. Yeah, the uh, again, not a lot went Milwaukee's way. I mean, honestly, we were on the playback. We hosted one. We will never do a playback for a playoffs game two again. But we discussed, like, it honestly, the score never seemed to really describe how bad this was for the Bucks. Yeah, they, they just felt like they were playing poor. They were getting in their own way, as they always managed to do at some point during the playoff series. So you're right. It never really felt like it was a true blowout because it's like, oh, the Bucks, if they just go on a little run here, it's a single digit game. They could just do that. They could be in striking distance. They never got there because every time it was like there was a moment where it's like, oh, time for a run here. They would find the nearest weapon of their choice. And whether it's a gun, they would just shoot themselves in both feet. They would take a if it was like an axe, like a swinging thing, they cut off their own feet. Um, then they would throw the axe up in the air and just get under it or something. I don't know. That's just what it felt like. I was wondering when you started that, just where it was going to end up, how you were going to get out of it. I didn't it did pretty know. well in the end. I did not know. It actually landed like the axe did. So it was good. I, I think this is about as bad as we've seen the books since the bubble. <laughs> um, it was certainly in the first half, the worst first of Giannis we'd seen since the bubble. And on that note, right up top, I think it is, it's only right to give the Celtics a lot of credit here because Jalen Brown came out of the gate hot. That's really what kind of opened this, this game up. And as Ty mentioned, it was a 14, 15, 16 point game for a long time. And if you take out what, what Jalen produced right out of the gate, the game is pretty tight probably throughout and will be an all time ugly playoff game. Um, Jason Tatum, to his credit, he found it late. Like he finishes with 29 points and 10 to 20 from the field, five to 10 from deep, eight assists, too. That is interesting. I think, particularly with some of the questions the books were asking of him earlier in the game, 
And in game one, he was going to need to pass and show he could do that. He's done a little bit more of that. And more than anyone for the Celtics, the player I'm kind of most interested in, I think is deserving of a lot of credit, although there are some things I did not enjoy from him tonight and we'll probably get to a certain play later. Uh, Grant Williams is 21 points, 7 of 14 from the field, 6 of 9 for deep, and that 6 of 9 comes in some of the most wide open, wide, wide open, uncontested trees you could find. But really, really good game from him. Like he's he's doing exactly everything you'd want from a role player. If he was a book doing that, we would be ecstatic. It's pretty pretty much equivalent to the kind of thing that we saw from Grayson in round one. Um, so I do think it's important to start off with saying this was a good Celtics game. Like the Celtics are doing a very good job on the books defensively. In terms of what the Celtics have offensively. I'm still not that impressed and it's obviously tougher for them without Marcus Smart but that will not matter if the books decide they're going to put up any more games like this you know you're going to gift any yeah. opponent the playoffs wins if you're going to play just as, as poorly as the books did here and there's only so much of that like I want to give the Celtics credit and the Celtics deserve credit but it's not as simple as oh well the Celtics just did a brilliant job defending the books because the books went away from a lot of the things they did in game one when they were not at their best, but they managed to put in a very good performance and win quite well, which is guys stopped moving, the ball stopped moving. And with that, your offense became stagnant. And like we compare it to the bubble, there's a reason it looked like the bubble for the first time in a couple of years. It's because if you give Giannis the ball in that spot and he's not playing heads up, intelligent basketball, which just doesn't happen any anymore, really. Um, and guys aren't moving. Like, that's the key thing, too. If you're going to give Giannis the ball, Celtics want to, you know, what's, um, what did you see use as a replacement for the W word, Ron? Barrier. 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 That's right. Um, the Celtics Celtics want to form a barrier. It's a tough enough night as is. I didn't want to bring <laughs> the W word into it. Um, they want to form a barrier. How do you, how do you help to break that down if you're the books? You've got to move your other players around. You've got to get in motion, try to drag players out of it. Like, you can't just be like, oh, well, we're all going to park here and we don't care where Grayson Allen's going or Bobby Portis or Pat Connaughton. And the books were standing. It was just static. And with that, you're asking for trouble and the books got trouble. Yeah. And I mean, you know, maybe get Giannis in some on ball actions too. And they just didn't do that in the first half. To illustrate your points, uh, Jalen Brown. The casual 90, 100, 100 shooting splits for the whole first half. Nine for 10 from the field, five for five from deep, two for two from free throw, 25 first half points. On the flip side, Giannis in the first half, two for 12, 0 for three from deep, one for one from free throw. It only went downhill from there. Uh, four assists to two turnovers, five first half points for Giannis. The Bucks lose his minutes by 16. The Celtics win Jalen Brown's nearly 20 minutes by 24. So that ended up just being the game. Giannis, horrible start. Jalen Brown, great start. The lead was too much for Milwaukee to ever close it. And plus, outside of Al Horford and Derek White, the Celtics all shot extremely well in the first half. They shot 65% from deep in the first half. Fast PP, who looked terrible in the second half, was two for two. Uh, arm bar, Grant Williams, three for three. Jalen, as I said, five for five, and Tatum was two for four as well. So really, Boston's offense was humming around Jalen Brown. Milwaukee's offense was humming like the worst song you've ever heard. What was that song you were calling out on the playback? Astronaut in the Ocean. Yeah, it's the not. They were humming the non-chorus to Astronaut in the Ocean. I don't know. I just want to get that shot in there in case. Yeah. <laughs> the other know. thing, looking at the Celtics, I mean, and it's not surprising with Smart out, they had to go seven deep because that is as deep as they can possibly go and even that's debatable with some of what fast pp delivered um you've got three guys on five fouls and you're only going seven deep like it's certainly it's it's something to monitor going forward but it's also something that the books could have taken more advantage of the whistle wasn't always going their way but again first half in particular too much settling too much settling for terrible terrible jump shots where you look at how the game ended up, you look at the foul tallies and you're like, you know what? Some more attacking there. Even if you're you're not moving the scoreboard as much as you would like, a couple of fouls here or there could have made a big difference to how that second half played out. 
because the Celtics do not have a lot of options at all. When I say a lot, I mean they have zero options. The guys they have waiting behind Peyton Pritchard and Grant Williams on the bench, it is terrifying. Like it is, it's so much worse than that we were a year ago and talking about the options the Bucks had. Like it is so much worse than that. Boston so, had five good players in this game. They did won we also, with it. Did they we say yeah, that they didn't have Marcus Smart? Huh? Did we say they didn't have Marcus Smart? Well, yeah. I mean, we just did. Yeah, they don't. They didn't. I don't know. Just thought that was worth mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it even worse. But I think that's the whole game. The whole the whole summary of this game was for so many reasons. There was so much there for the Bucks, and they just it's not that they didn't take advantage. It's like they refused to take advantage. I mean, there's times in the second half where the shots finally are falling. Giannis gets in a rhythm, and then suddenly, like corner shooters are wide open. And you know, the story after game one, right, was the Bucks will give up some threes, but they're contested. They're above the break. They're not the looks you want. Then it's Grant Williams, Jason Tatum, wide open from the corner, which is very much not the shots yeah, you want to give up. 20 three-point attempts to Tatum and Jalen Brown combined. It's and then not. nine for Grant Williams, who was red hot all game. So thirty, basically 33s to those three guys is way too many. Uh, Horford takes five, is one for five. Derek White takes four and is 0 for four. Like Those are the guys you need to funnel shots to. Milwaukee lost its edge doing that. And like loose balls, it felt like in the second half. Every single loose ball, every single rebound, the balls that they secured without a doubt. And I think some of this is Brooke is in foul trouble. Brooke did not have a good game. They, again, failed to use the size to an advantage for Brooke Lopez. They couldn't get him the ball in mismatches. Um, the Bucks were not grabbing those loose balls and were giving up extra opportunities, which often led to more corner threes. So it's like... Yeah, Giannis in particular on that front, yeah. too, was yeah. guilty. I mean... I had two to three plays that he just completely took off and not like, oh, you know, he's out of the picture. He's taking his playoff. No, I'm thinking of like when he was under the rim and he just fell asleep and Al Horford gets an easy two points at a time when the books are building up some momentum. Or I'm thinking about, um, was it Tatum, Tatum or Brown? Tatum, Tatum, Tatum tree, three. where Brooke was kind of caught up behind Grant Williams. Giannis could have fought true and just shown something, just try to do something to put him off, didn't do it. So that was that was pretty disappointing. Weird Giannis game overall. Uh, at the end, comes out with a stat line that does not look that far removed from, you know, how we would often play. But interesting, kind of going back to the conversation we had in the last game, like this was just so much worse, so much worse because of how he's approaching the game. Like Giannis's is, Giannis is performance is not dictated by his box score contributions at all anymore. We've moved past that. He can basically do what he wants, whether he's playing well, whether he's playing poorly. Over the course of 48 minutes, he's going to get his numbers. It doesn't really mean anything. It's about how is he managing to impart his influence on the game? How is he dictating play? And he didn't dictate play. Or if he was leading the books in any direction, he was leading them into misguided shots, unstructured offense, and... A game that was really just too frantic, I think, early on. Like, that's when it got away from them, too. You're thinking, okay, you've come out, you don't have it, but you can regroup quickly and you can bounce back from that. And I don't think any of us were concerned at the start, like right at the beginning of the game, when I think it was 13 2 or something like that. It's like, okay, this is not ideal, but the books can easily kind of fight through this and come back. The problem is they came out of the timeout after that. And you're like, oh, okay, they haven't they haven't got their head in the game at all. In fact, with the crowd in it, with Jalen Brown absolutely lighting it up, they look they looked rattled. And you would expect Giannis to be the guy at the center of the storm there to say, okay, this is not a big deal. We've been in tougher spots, bigger games. We know how to get through this. And instead, he was driving recklessly to do nothing. <laughs> Not even to toss up shots at the rim, um, not even to pass out. He was just kind of driving into Grant Williams pretty aimlessly at times, or he was settling for pull-up jumpers. And he did not have his jump shot in order at all in the first half. So I, I on the one hand, it's like, how can you win? If you're the Bucks, how can you win like that? Particularly with Chris out. Maybe if Chris is there, he's a big game. You can fight through a lot more of that you're closer at the end and you get one big push and you get over the line somehow but without Chris you need Giannis to excuse me to dictate play and he didn't manage to do that in any kind of positive way 
Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't picking apart the Celtics defense like he did in game one. I, I think that's what you're getting at by he didn't dictate the game, right, Adam? It's just he was not controlling how this game was played, and I think that's the best way to put it. Giannis was fully in control of game one, fully in control. We talked about on the post-game one pod, but, yeah, it would have been nice if he made his shots, like his rim attempts. He didn't need to because he was already in full control of the game. He did not have either in this game. He did not make his shots at the rim. He did not dictate the game with his passing because for some reason, the Bucs just decided to play iso ball. That's just, the, that's the crutch they go to, even though it doesn't work. It's just going iso after iso after iso, no pass possessions. This was driving us crazy on the playback, just possession after possession where there's no passes. It's Drew or it's Giannis bringing the ball up the court. And it's just, they want to get to the rim. They want to get to their spots right away. Try to try to score, just sort of end a Celtics run, but wasn't working. The Celtics have a good defense. Even without Marcus Smart, they still have a good defense. It's not going to work like that. They just need to get back to what their roots on the offensive end are, which is not just iso ball after iso ball after iso possession after iso possession until I pull all my hair out. I thought, uh, you know, we talked a lot about Giannis, and of course he's the one you're going to be most disappointed in. And I think that first half was it was bad decision-making and bad execution, which really is when you go from a bad start to a start that sinks you in a playoff game, even if you play okay in the second half. Drew was in the same boat, and both of 100%. those guys doing that for the entire first half. Bad process, bad results over and over and over. I mean, how many times have we seen? We've been on playbacks. We've been watching games. Uh, it's a bad process, but it worked. This was the unholy marriage of like, you know, 20 first half minutes of nothing but bad process, bad result over and over and over and over. And on the other end, again, like you said, Adam, we should credit to Boston. Very much took advantage. I mean, there was... They could have wasted that. If they're up by 15 at half, this is a whole different game, but they weren't. They took enough advantage and, and they were able to keep the Bucs at bay, kind of the same way the Bucs kept Boston at bay in, in game one. There are some parallels there. Milwaukee now just needs to get back to that and stay the hell away from this, which I do think, you know, still 1-1, still stole home court, and the formula still works. They got back to moving the ball in the second half. They won the second half. They won Giannis' minutes in the second half. Yeah, and Giannis figured it better. out himself, too. Yeah. And uh, we kept talking about, because it was something from early on in the playback, we were getting some comments in the chat where it's like, oh, the defense, defense is terrible. Defense is the problem. Defense is pretty good in large stretches until, like, it wasn't there at all. But the point I think we kept making, I don't think everyone agreed with us, and I'm sure people won't now. It's on your offense, too, because... You're not scoring at all, as they didn't for large stretches of the game. You're not giving yourself a chance to get back and be set defensively. You're not giving yourself a chance to squeeze the life out of the Celtics like you were doing in game one. Everything was missed shot, and you go down the other end, and the Celtics would go and score. Like it's the, the two teams were playing different games. The Celtics were getting the opportunity to set their defense up exactly as they wanted, make sure that the matchups were playing out exactly as they wanted defensively, where the Bucs were finding themselves in a state of, you know, permanent transition. Like you're constantly, constantly scrambling backwards. And as much as the Celtics may then slow things down, may then look to get into kind of more diligent half-court sets, they're getting the chance to set them up in a way where you may not have exactly the matchups you want for the books. You may just not kind of have your feet under you on a defensive possession. I think overall for the game, you said something at the end of our playback tie, which I think is 100% spot on and sums up the books in this game. They did not have one six minute stretch in the entirety of the game where they just had it all together, where they avoided just, harebrained decisions where they played solid Milwaukee Bucks basketball. And if they got even one stretch like that, they would have eaten into this lead in a significant enough way that I think it wakes everyone up, their eyes open, and it's like, oh, hold on a minute. This is really there to be stolen. If they had done that in the second half of the first quarter, it's an entirely different game. Like, it's it's an up-for-grabs game entirely. And even the few times where they got close, you get to 12, you get to 13, it's like, here it is. And then they turn it over or they give up an open tree and they wouldn't go to close it out. And you're like, 
okay like <laughs> it's just it's not gonna happen tonight but that that was the thing it's it's very rare that you see the books at no point in the game like we know this is a team that does have lapses and spells where things go really really poorly see almost every third quarter throughout the regular season but to not have the counter punch to that to not have the one spell where it's like oh but they completely locked it down for that period of the game and that's what got them in position to really make a positive impact turn the game on its head that's that's something that you just that's that's tough and for as much as the Celtics as much as Al Horford's had another good game Robert Williams Grant Williams like I, I think again we said this in game one but Giannis is seeing really good defense he's seeing some of the better defense he has seen it doesn't mean it's not beatable. You've got the role players. We've seen that these guys are up to the task. And like, interesting when you do look through books, I mean, Pat Connaughton was probably the best book on the floor tonight. And he was six or seven on the night. Uh, Bobby Portis, his five or seven was interesting. I don't think it was Bobby's best game, but still there's some efficiency there. If you're picking your spots better and you're making passes at the right moments, there were easy points there. There were easy points there for the role players if life is difficult for Giannis. He made those passes in game one. He did not make them on this occasion. Yeah, just on Bobby for a quick second. I thought maybe he could have taken a few more shots. I actually have something ready on this. Here's why the first half sucked. Giannis and Drew took 23 of the 35 shots the Milwaukee Bucks took in the first half. They made six of them. Six of 23 is 26%, a.k.a. awful, garbage. The frustrating part about this game is that the role players were not bad. Other Bucks in the first half, the garbage, awful first half, were 9 for 12 from the field. They just weren't getting any shots because Drew and Giannis hijacked every other, literally more than every other possession by taking these terrible early shot clock looks. Like, your role players that, shot that holds 75%. Up, that holds up too, Ty, because not necessarily the highest volume guys, but guys you could have got some looks to. Brooke Lopez, one of two. He West took, Matthews, oh, by the way, Brooke, one no, of two. no shots in the first half. Not, not a single shot attempt to get, given Brooke to Brooke and West, one of two. Javon Carter, one of one. The shots are not being shared. Like, that's your that's your rotation outside of Pat and Grayson, your kind of non-star or go-to offensive guys. You're not giving them any chance. You're not giving them any chance to impact the game which is even crazier considering the struggles Giannis and Drew are having. Considering what we saw in game one, literally no role player had a bad shooting game outside of garbage time surge throwing up 45 bad hooks. Nobody shot below 50% except for Giannis and Drew, who were both has, under that. Has hero ball been the most consistent detriment to the Bucks in for recent sure. history? Except for game six of the finals, yes. Like, no, I'm saying if something goes wrong, is it, can you usually attribute it to hero ball? A lot of the time. Sometimes it's just sloppy. I do think also as well, one of the interesting things with a hero ball approach to books is that's the Chris Middleton game. Like, if you are if you don't have Chris Middleton, you should be moving away from that because he is one of the guys where you... I don't know, the him. Boston He'll Celtics also shots. know this. <laughs> like, there are nights where he's going to go into that mode and he's just got it and it is going to work out and you're going to be fine with it. You know, all aboard the Tough Shot Express. That is not where you get the best of Giannis's game. It's not where you get the best of Drew's game as much as Drew has, particularly throughout this season, had a knack for making tough shots. And he made some tough ones tonight. It's just if every shot you take is a tough shot, it's going to net out in the negative. You're you're not going to be even close to having an efficient game. And it's going to hurt you. It's it's asking more of your defense. And the defense was was largely there. It's just you needed you needed some support with the offense. You needed to do something to just set the Celtics back on their heel, make make them adjust a little bit, and control the pace of the game more. Because again, when you're missing shots and the Celtics are just then getting to rebound, they're going and they're shooting forty six and a half percent from deep as they did for the night. They're having a really efficient game. You're playing the entire game at the Celtics' pace, and I don't think pace is something that would concern me generally in this series, but when you look at how the game started, the Bucks needed to slow this game down and get some control on it. And they never managed to do that. And that's in part because they didn't make shots, they didn't create some easy shots that would have allowed the game to just settle into a slightly more 
lazy rhythm, a gentler flow for a while, where then you can say, okay, we've got it. We're seeing the ball go through the rim. Now let's go again. Like, I think that's a, that's a tough, tough situation if you're not going to do anything to grab back control of the pace of play. You know, it's a crazy thing I just saw. According to, according to shot quality data, which takes into account like expected field goal percentage based on the defenders, the person shooting the shot and like closeouts and all that stuff. It's an even game. Dead even. 97.9 expected score for both teams. Celtics shot really well in contested looks in this game. I mean, you're going to if you shoot that much of a percentage from three, even with Milwaukee blowing some coverage in the second half. And if you give guys like Tatum and Brown enough open looks that their confidence really grows. Getting like, to the rhythm, yeah. yeah. You're asking for that. Also, like, anytime Giannis that's shoots part of it. 25 times from anywhere, they're probably going to expect better for the Bucs than they got uh, tonight. I almost yeah, Giannis was like, expected to score nine more points. Probably, probably should have. I, honestly, though, it's almost encouraging. I feel like so many of the underlying signs are good. They just need to not play dumb. I mean, the fact that they, they need to stop getting out of their own way. I the, feel like that's we've been talking about that for years, literal years now. Yeah. The crux of GSPN was them getting in there. I mean, it wasn't entirely, but like <laughs> once it started, we kept talking about them getting in their own way. Right. That's just been the thing for years and years and years. What's go? What happens? I, How do they do this to themselves? What is the, is there like a pregame thing that they need to change? Is there a halftime thing that too they long need to of change? A nap? Too long of a nap? Who knows? Do they need to like stop doing something off the court? I have no idea. But they keep beating themselves. Do they need to like go seek professional like help, like therapy or something? Like, come on, you can be good to yourselves, guys. Like, but, incur- like help yourself. The be kind to yourself. It's so important. Ty, I'm on a run. Let me go. Okay, here. Okay. <laughs> keep talking about therapy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like Drew in the first half here. He's not passing this I gotta, ball. I got to clear out. <laughs> I, I'm done now. It's gone. It's a turnover. The momentum was ruined. Just like the Bucks. No, I think what's different, though, from previous years when we'd yell about this, their role players showed up two games in a row on the road in Boston. Like, that did not happen before. What happened before was we needed them to spam Chris Giannis pick and rolls because they didn't have role players. Because Nikola Miritic is out there point shaving openly. Like, the, the help is there. It's actually more frustrating now. They don't need to be perfect to win this series, I don't think. They need to be better, obviously. It's, I don't think Boston is bad. They need to, the Bucs need to play well, but the Bucs are better. They're, they're more top-heavy, although they have not looked like it. They're deeper. They have looked like that. And they just need to play into that. And if they play into that, I, I just think there's formulas here. Not to you know pull out a graph in the middle of a hoop convo, but I think there's a winning formula here for the Bucs that they need to embrace and – yeah, it's, I think it's almost more frustrating. Like, we don't need them to abandon their core principles and, you know, run a bunch of Giannis pick and roll that we yelled about for so long. Like, just do exactly what you did in game one. The same thing. And they were just like, no, we're actually, we got this. But I, I do wonder, is part of that maybe a little bit of taking this game for granted early on? You know, when when you see Drew and Giannis get into to hero ball mode, that feels a little bit like we've got this, you know, don't worry. We've got this. We can just, we can play this way and it's fine. I can just go and take over this game because, you know, we won game one, big Marcus smarts out. And this is all we have to do where it's not, you've got to replicate what you did in game one. You've got to stick to the plan, share the ball around trust in your role players. Like that's, even in the broadcast in game one, that was the thing that they kept talking about with Giannis is the trust he's placing in his teammates. And that kind of disappeared because I don't know if he felt like he needed to do that coming into the game. Like it, it seems like something that is very unboxy in a way. It certainly doesn't align with anything they ever say. But I, I do think it's easy to look at how this game started and be like, yeah, foot was off the gas. They took things for granted and they got behind the eight ball right from the jump. And then you've got Giannis and Drew chasing and just being like, oh, don't worry. We're the we're the two best players in this team. We're going to solve this. When that's not how you solve anything. That's not how you win a lot of your games. Like, it's it's not playing books basketball. Yeah, and I think, you know, a good point was just made. Actually, let me credit the person. I've got it open. Uh, oh, I've hit the wrong button. I'm fumbling. <laughs> At No Nonsense 101 
Um, I tweeted the first half shooting stat just now. And he mentions that, you know, the Celtics were, I think, better about sending help. And it, it, now, it wasn't Giannis could ISO and then there's a pass there. I think Boston made it a little harder, which, again, we should give credit to Boston. They played quite well. But then it's like, you know, then run in action, then force the defense to move. And that's what they didn't do. That they just yeah, kept that's where you've got guys wall. standing around. You've yeah. got no one who's looking just to try and force Celtics defenders through different rotations. They made it Maybe so Maybe force some switches. You don't have enough screen set. There are large periods of the game where Brooke is out there, Bobby's out there. And then when Giannis was taking the ball and you're like, really? Neither of those guys is going to come up and set a screen. You've got to get you've got to get motion into the game. Like no matter what else you're doing for the books, you've got to get motion into the game. You cannot let an opposing defense just set in like that and be like, well, this is what we're going to do. This is what it takes. The frustrating thing about that is this is a formula the books have long since cracked and they didn't see anything different in this game. They didn't see anything different in game one and they won't see anything different for the rest of the series. They may see players who are better at it than some of the players they've seen execute this before, but it really doesn't feel like that should be to the point where it causes the books this level of difficulty. And certainly over the course of a series, I'm inclined to agree with you, Ty, where it's like, well, if the rest of the series play out in some kind of, let's say if it's the middle ground of what we saw between game one and game two, I'd feel very good about the books winning that. Now, that might be where it's like a six, seven game series where, you know, go take care of business today. And it doesn't have to be, but this is the Milwaukee books. It's a very books way of doing things. And look, it's not easy. You're down one of your three best players. You're playing a very good team and you start in the road. As you pointed out, as is on the screen for those on YouTube, if you look at the graphic, the book stole game one. They're going back to Milwaukee having taken back home court. Like, that is generally your goal. They're going to have a hard time talking themselves into that feeling as good as it should. If these games were reversed, the momentum would feel different. I think you'll get a different kind of response, though. I think you'll you'll get the books a little bit fired up. Back in Milwaukee, it should be one of the first games that actually feels like a playoff game because one, it was the Bulls in the first round and the Bulls are the Bulls, which means they're not very good and it didn't feel like the playoffs. And also the Bulls are the Bulls. So there's lots of Chicago people in Milwaukee and Wisconsin and nearby who decide to come in and make it a pretty weird atmosphere. You're not really going to have anything like that to the same extent here. It's a real team. The series is alive. It's going to go back to Milwaukee and the energy is going to need to be there. You know, if, if everyone is allowed, you know, if there's not any more restrictions put in place to people's access, game three should be a game where the Deer District kind of comes alive. I don't know if that's allowed anymore. Has, our, honestly, has our bid gone through? Do we know? Can we announce yet that? The I think we need to sell some more merch. Yeah, true. And we the, need more. The YouTube sale was subs. really sale was really good. We need some merch, and we need uh, we need to get to a thousand subs on YouTube. Even if you listen to GSPNstore.com. GSPNstore.com and YouTube. Okay, there's no good YouTube link, but just type in Eurostep Podcast Network. Um, and even if you listen on the pod feed, that's fine. Like the YouTube views are great. People love the pod on YouTube. We just need subscribers. Just <laughs> we just click subscribe, subscribers. Please, we hit a thousand. They flip a magical switch. We all make bank. We can buy the Deer District, maybe. Um, we might need more than a thousand for that. Uh, can I side note on that for a second? And this is this is going to border into free ads territory. I'm going to uh, try to avoid that. So they they're planning for oh boy game two to have like a watch event. The event is sponsored. So the event is sponsored. You know, I'll avoid saying the name. Game but two they, or three. No, game two, I believe there oh, was to be this. one which they, oh. which they canceled you to wetter. Is that? It's happened like ten yeah. times. It's been it's been raining on them every time. Yeah. So there was there was used to be a watch party which had a name specifically. It was presented by the same people who uh, their logo adorns the book's jerseys, right? Oh. And I was just thinking, this is ridiculous. So what they want to get is they want to have events that are presented by someone at the plaza that will be sponsored by someone at the deer district it's really the end goal for this is the whole deer district gets a sponsor then so you can have three levels of sponsor and then you need your nft that you buy directly from the books to get in this what are you doing it's just 
ruining like one of the most pure and fun things, something that became so kind of emblematic of the good for the franchise, the good for the city last year. And they're doing everything they can to sterilize it, make it as corporate. It's just, it we need, sucks. We need someone to full Woodstock the Deer District. Like, just get it, some TVs, find a field. Like, we we have the technology for this. Just need to, real fans need to make sure if there's, if there's the opportunity and if you don't have tickets, you're not going to be in the building on Saturday. Let's hope the weather doesn't give another reason to cancel it. Get down there and try to... Uh, Try to, in spite of all of the book's best efforts to absolutely ruin the Deer District, try to get the place going again. And if you're yeah. in the building, even better. Like, Pfizer form needs to be loud. Um, you need to make it an environment where, like, I don't think TD Garden plays into the series that much. But when Jalen Brown comes out of the gate hot like that, the place gets loud, and that's where you get, oh, the books don't know where they are. And they yeah. look completely flustered, and the game gets away from them. And we've seen that happen for the books and home games over the past three years, you know, where you get a really strong start, Fiserv gets super loud, and the opponent all of a sudden just doesn't know where they are. So that's a little bit of a side note, but I just, books, I see you. I see you doing everything to ruin all things good, like that are not related to the team. You're trying super hard. It's impressive how hard you're trying to ruin it all. Uh, but I'm, I'm asking, Good books fans everywhere. The people of Wisconsin, don't let it happen. Milwaukee, go and rescue the Deer District. The plaza at the Deer District, while it still does not have a corporate overlord. I can't figure out why we don't get media passes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I, uh, you, I didn't, agree, you didn't get no, them I before agree. affiliating no, yeah, with, with well, me yeah, and Jordan. No, no, so. no. Oh, yeah, no. It's not, I'm not singling out you guys. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm going to say one other thing on this. Oh, boy. Okay. Might as well. <laughs> it was 51 years on April 30th since the Bucks won their first NBA championship. Did the Milwaukee Bucks commemorate this on social media in any way? Going to guess no. no. Too busy, you know. Trying to sell NFTs to get into the Deer District for a sponsor to be named have... later. Like, oh, what are we doing? They, what are what are we there. doing? So it, it took Jordan to commemorate that, and that's how things are gonna continue. So if anyone has any issues, please come talk to us because we're doing all the you know, keep your history alive work. That's also what we're here for. We care about the team, yeah, we don't care about get the mad team at us. the Take history of the organization. Yeah, we're available worth, to consult. It's worth That's clarifying when we say the Bucks, there's two different entities. There is a team and there is an, an organization. organization. Yeah, exactly. We, we we're might yelling to, at both. We might need to start saying Bucks org. I feel like I don't know. Maybe maybe it's obvious enough. Well, the, I, I don't like I don't, I don't like that because the organization have at times made good decisions. They are on a heater right now, where they are not making good decisions. There's there's a very kind of clear. Top process to the kind sense. of decisions being made uh, by figures within the books, figures affiliated with the books, and it is not it is not playing out very well. I don't think it will have a great end result. You'll lose fans. It will alienate people. You won't get the authentic thing you got last year. Which, listen, the books need to not do what they did today to also help you to get the authentic thing you did last year. But or it should stay out of their way and help them. You know. The people in Milwaukee are ready to go and support this team. So Look I'm sorry. What happens I've, in Memphis I've got us off track. When people can, like diehard fans can actually go to games. Look at that environment. It's amazing. Look at what the Pelicans did when diehard fans could go to the games. Look at that environment. Wild. Wild. Do we have any other game stuff to talk about? I agree, by the I'm way. sure we do. I'd probably just derail us. Pat played really well. Almost got his Pat arm yanked really out of his socket. But it was. Speaking yeah. of businessmen. Yeah. Pat, and I do when, when you're talking about the environment that needs to be there at Fiserv. I think there was a Bobby Portis dunk in the second half that were this in Fiserv, they would have gone crazy because it's Bobby and it was an awesome. No, to, to be dunk. clear, to be clear, Fiserv has been great in the past. Just look at anything from the finals. Yeah, it, it was electric. It should not electric. take until the finals, though. That's true. I want big as energy. I want big there. energy on and- Saturday. Well, that's yeah, Ty. I'm sorry, Ty. You are a real fan, but we can't have you. All other real fans can go. Yeah, yeah I'm banned from the Deer District, so you're you're fine, Ty. 
Like, I'm not, we'll both suffer. I'm, I don't know if they'd let you in anymore, Owen. Do, do, do you have the passes? I I'm, don't have the NFT. I'm going farther away from Milwaukee for the game, so I'm really not going to get blamed for this one. I, I did say after game one, I, I didn't think that this would be the Bobby game because Bobby is the mayor of Milwaukee, and he's got to save it till he's back at exactly. Pfizer to really, to really unlock it and have the, the crowd fully get behind that. So hopefully that's still to come. There, there is a good there. Yep, I think we lost Adam for a second here. The Bucks got to him. <laughs> to the Bucks, oh no, they got to him. They got to Adam. How did they get to him first? He's in Ireland. They they just, should I they, be worried? No, they shut down the whole country's feed of internet. They're like, let's okay, we we can't handle this guy talking about us from across the pond. It, we'll we'll handle it from our country bit, but not from those people in Ireland. <laughs> we we can't go after people in the U.S. It's too dangerous, but we can we can go abroad. He's just gone. He's just frozen. We'll launch some cyber attacks. Yeah. What do you think he'd be saying right now? Um, should I try the accent? Yes, absolutely. This is. I the can time. only say one thing. Oh God! Oh, now the boxes right. are messed up. <laughs> oh no! We're falling oh, apart. No. It's okay. Turkey tree. Nice. Oh God! Ugh, this isn't great either. <laughs> Hopefully, it's it comes fun. back in soon. The YouTube is is we're scrambling right now. It's a bit of a mess. Um. But yeah. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, I thought pretty good game overall. Yeah, I just mean, not, like, not like enough. I talked about it. Exactly. Like, it's what I mentioned earlier. He had the efficiency. He had the shot making. But it's the same problem that was emblematic of everyone else who was a role player for the Milwaukee Bucks. I think the more pressing role player to really talk about is Grayson Allen, in my opinion. Because he just started lighting it up in this postseason. Even in game one, he had a very good game. Four shots in this game. Four shots, one three-point attempt. He had three drives, like, which were actually pretty good drives. He just couldn't finish on a lot of them. Pulled a pulled a Dante, uh, <laughs> but Ugh. I just I need to see more Grayson involved because he is one of the best floor. He's the best floor spacer on the team by far, by far. Yeah, I, I just, just need to get more out of it. Just clearly not not enough from him. Boom! Oh, soon. There we go. Wait. There we go. Now you're muted. This is great content. They they tried to send me the same place they said Mrs. Banga. That's what happened there. <laughs> That's, That's what I said. That's what I said. I said they took you the box got to you. Yeah. yeah, they they did their best. I have no <laughs> idea what happened there. It's never happened before. Don't know what that will look like on YouTube. So oh, it's great. not great. <laughs> we just did the best we could. Um <laughs> Rohan was just saying Grayson Allen needed to have a, a much a much better game, um, or just get more. Again, same with Bobby, just get more shots. He just was not involved enough uh, in the offense. Only taking one three pointer tonight. Yeah, I, I mean, what I was gonna say before somebody intervened, they didn't want my my truth to be spoken. <laughs> uh, maybe it was Adam Silver in this uh, because I was gonna talk about Grant Williams and that play on Pat. That's a really really dirty play. Like to basically clinch in on his arm, on his elbow to just kind of tighten up on that and force his elbow the other way. That was really, really it's bad. Kelly esque Yeah, it's exactly that kind of motion. I mean, you think of all of the fuss of that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've missed it. I don't think that is going to be the kind of outcome. Of course, thankfully, there wasn't the injury here that I guess sparked that in that particular case. But I mean, for all of the talk on all sides and tried to play out, some people say, oh, that's a dirty play. That's a dirty play. A lot of the time, it's not intentionally dirty. That that looked That, that bad. was a dirty play. That, that, was a dirty that play. really, like, because the arm was so tight that you're going to feel it if you're Grant Williams the whole time. And to then kind of scissor kind of motion clasp into his arm, it was really, it was a, a Good break for the books um, that there wasn't a break. You know, that's Pat got away with that one. So and Pat got called for a foul on that play. Yeah, he got called for a foul. No repercussion at all. For, nope. for they, they looked at it for, for unsportsmanlike, right? Which yeah. is, I don't know. I Basically, the rule book does not have a way to review that and work that one out that you can assess that. But that was just. If you asked Dan Van Gundy, it should have been a charge on Giannis. <laughs> 
Uh, I am no longer the lowest in GSPN on SVG. But yeah, that play was terrible. And really, it was sad because I feel like I've had nothing but positive. I mean, outside of him killing the Bucks, but like positive takes on Grant Williams. So it's not like, you know, there's certain players where you go, oh, of course, he went for that. It's like disheartening to see Grant do that, unless I've just totally missed something. From oh, maybe, maybe that's a once off. Yeah. Like hopefully. it might be. I, it doesn't really, I don't have a perception of him in my head. It hasn't completely transformed that. But as one play in isolation, that was a really, really dangerous play. And I, I know how the conversation would go if that was the other way. Um, so I just, I, I think it is worth pointing out. That they would have burned Grayson good. Allen at the stake if that was him. They probably still will. <laughs> Chicago is still ready. It'll only make him more powerful. <laughs> he's gonna rise. Call him. Call him. He should be. We think he's powerful with booze. Should just be playing wait for the Suns because he's a hug. phoenix. He oh. rose from the fire. See, it just... that's pretty. It's better so, than your one from earlier. Are you saying that the sun is in fact the most powerful? Is that See, magic can do anything? <laughs> it's not true. There's no precedent for that. If it, we're assuming that it's real, I know. But it, 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 uh, let's not do this again. I said if no they arguments. burn him for magic, is what I'm hearing. I said he no becomes arguments. Fire like the sun. Uh, okay. He looks like was, magic was, against the bulls. I was going for the phoenix more than the sun, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mythical, I don't know. mythical creature rather than the city. Yeah, we, this is a weird, weird podcast. It's just not surprising. <laughs> well, we're weird people. <laughs> I, I think we're just going to keep in the whole technical part because we kind of did keep it rolling, and it's pretty funny on YouTube. I, I honestly, I don't know how you'd get around that. Yeah. Well, I just don't want to edit. Fun. Is the truth, but yeah, that's I and it's it. good. It's good. It. No, it's good content type. That's what you have to say. It's good content. Yeah, that too. It's interesting to look at. Rohan's face got all pulled in half. It was pretty crazy. Wow. People are gonna like that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited is, now. <laughs> what else? What else is there from this game that we can really take away? I don't know. I feel like I feel like we're just. What, what do we take? What do we take to game three though? That's that's, yeah, that's that I think the only question. thing. Or do we want to save that for a different conversation? Make well, some shots. We probably will. no. Just have, take take better shots. That's all I need to see. Have other players take shots. Move the ball. Yeah, that's they just need to play better, and I feel I still feel real good about this series. Like they only had I 16 agree. assists. Only 16 of them. Did not Half hit of the, them were uh, from Giannis and Drew. Did not hit the magic over under line of the game of 24, shockingly, because those typically work out pretty well. Yeah, I feel like whenever they tweet that, I saw that scrolling uh, the timeline earlier. I was like, there's no way they're passing the Between that there. and the broomstick tweet, we were so cooked for this game. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was, it I was, just, it was I just saw they actually, stars. they 54-24, they won the points of the paint. Yeah. So that it's is also to something that. to to take in the positive. For as much as it felt like it changed, the Celtics are still not able to score in the paint. So if they want to play the game where it's like, oh yeah, we're just gonna take all these trees, you're not gonna make them every night. You know, you're not likely to make them four times out of seven in a series. That's all you have to do. If you don't believe that, if people want to get upset or dispute that, go look at you know NBA. Elite NBA players go look at their three point shooting percentage because that will answer to are you likely to do that four times out of seven in a series? The answer is no. There aren't too many guys in the NBA who shoot better than 50%. There aren't too many teams that will do that for a long spell. And it will go back to what we talked about earlier, which is can you just maybe give up the right shots this time? There were a few too many to Jason Tatum, to Jalen Brown, to Grant Williams. And you've got to close out. When the opportunity is there, it doesn't matter if you're not going to get there. Like Giannis with your long arms, more uh, improbable things have happened in the past. If you're Giannis, you're Brooke. Put your arm out, weaponize your size, and just go out and make your presence felt. And they can miss shots from there. Well said. Yeah, better shot selection. And I think we've seen the recipe. I don't think there's... You know, the Celtics probably won't shoot as bad as they did game one, but I think the Bucks can win games on that formula. Like you said, winning the paint, not totally collapsing from three, and having a real NBA offense for four whole quarters would do a world of good for the Bucks. Let's so, try one quarter. No, let's one try four. Quarter. They did four earlier. They can do four again. It's the playoffs. I don't need to – Baby I, steps. No. More, more than one would definitely be Okay, advisable. how about two? Two quarters. Two, two and a half. Two at minimum. Two, two at half. minimum. Ty, you're pushing, you're pushing it here. 
They this is the Bucks we're talking. We saw him do it. This is the Bucks we're talking. Do it. Just do it. Ty, Ty. I sound like a mobster on helium. Just do yeah, it. Yeah, I have Just no idea it. what what was happening. They've there. gone. They've gone into their. In- can't refuse. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this up. <laughs> they've, they've they've gone into their infant stage. The Bucks. You have to coddle them out of it. You have to coddle this offense. You have to tell the team it's going to be okay. Uh, the, the, yeah, I just somehow I'm keeping the conversation going while these two are I'm dying. still That's laughing at my thing. I know, I know it's a real turn of events here. Usually, I'm the one just losing my mind. Um, we needed you, you stepped up, unlike the Bucks. Yes, but the Bucks they do need to step up in game three, which will be on Saturday. There's a lot of time for this to stew, a lot of time, but there's also a lot of time for you to subscribe to the YouTube and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, subscribe to the Substack. Subscribe to us on Twitter by hitting the follow button. Uh, hit hit up gspnstore.com. There's well, no playoff. Wrong side. There's no playoff. I'm, discount I'm actually code getting fooled by re- reflections here. <laughs> this is this is the state things are in. Um, gspnstore.com. Yes, gspnstore.com. We might have another promo at some point, but not right now. Oh, we uh, we for sure will. But I mean, beyond that, we'll have all sorts of it's. If people are like, oh, you know, I got some stuff or I took a look, you know, like that, but there wasn't exactly what I wanted there. Just always keep checking. Keep an eye. Keep. Are we going to be dropping new stuff at some point? Who's to say? For sure. You know, just add things to your basket. Let them sit there if you want. And then, you know, over time, you can go you can go and check out on that one. But gsfanstore.com, we have a whole bunch of stuff. And there, there will be more to come throughout this month. So... Keep your eyes peeled, keep your your ears open on pods, and uh, you'll get all the news of that. For sure, for sure. Ty, do you have anything you want to say as we wrap this up? Bucks and six. Bucks and six, Adam? Yeah, for sure. It's All my predictions will be right. If it is Bucks and six, I was worried about it after game one. I thought... And this this might be books in four. It so definitely nice is to not going to be books you. at four. Now they're going to make sure all my predictions come true. So books in six. We already got books in game one. The other one was that the books defense is going to going to outlast, outsmart the the Celtics defense over the course of the series, and it's all going to be good in the end. I'm feeling good about books in seven. And I also missed something while doing the plugs. Make sure you leave a review. We oh, haven't yeah. had a new review in a bit. Yeah, they're so, hating. Yeah, they're hating. They're like me on Giannis's uh, <laughs> on Giannis's dunk. Uh, but yeah, make sure you, you leave a five it. star. Ra- I know. I was going with a bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, make sure you leave a five star rating on Apple or Spotify. If you're on Apple, you can leave an actual review. These help a lot. Please, thank you. We'll read it out. We'll treat you all nice. Uh, on cruising for a bruising, check that out as well. Andrew, Andrew will, will sing, sing your reviews. Your reviews. Yeah. We, I'll sing the reviews if you leave it here. He said it. He signed up for this. I was going to volunteer him, but he just went and did it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm, right, I'm signing right. myself up. I'll sing the reviews. You really, you watched that video of Andrew singing today and you were like, yeah. How many takes did that take, Andrew? Oh, that was one take. Oh, oh one nice. take Tony. Nice. Yeah, I mean, he the reviews there a while. He might have been practicing in his hotel in Manchester <laughs> for a week, but he couldn't go anywhere else. But that was one take on the pod. Yeah, I'll sing the reviews. Even if it's not something that can be put into song, I'll do it. It's got to be five stars, though. Yeah, five stars only. Okay, I think we're done. Pod random. We'll talk to you next time.